Hello Game of Thrones fans and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lady Fire Snow. If you are not caught up with everything that's happened through Season 7, this is your spoiler warning. Welcome to all my new subscribers. I usually do theory and prediction videos, but lately I have been posting a lot of my content from Con of Thrones. One of the live podcasts that I attended at Con of Thrones was with Kate Dickey, and it was quite funny. I hope that you will enjoy. Is so amazing about this story is like, how much do you want to know about this world? You can, you can almost, you can know it. What happened in Bravos five thousand years ago? You can actually, you can find out. Uh, what happened? Somewhere in Valeria, an oyster, a clam, or a cockle. Right. What happened in Valeria? We don't know why it fell, but we know what it was like, and we know that something happened there. All these things you can, you can reach back, and you can, you can find those things. And part of what makes it so important is, and I think George doesn't get enough credit for this. It's just like he's so good at, at naming shit. King's Landing, you know, like it makes sense. Like that, where did Aegon set foot when he came to the continent? He was there at King's Landing. Field of Fire. Field of Fire, like so evocative of like a great battle. And so when it was like really the best episode of season seven, um, when that episode, spoilers, made, were, spoilers, and spoilers of war, uh, decided to call like the great battle there. Banks of the river, the train attack, it was just like very tough, tough, thing. tough stuff. Very tough train. Not as bad though as Frozen Lake Battle. Frozen Lake Battle is shortly after. Uh, Frozen Lake Battle. There were three, literally 300 people. He was in the throne. He was, was in the throne. There were gold books there. People would be like, oh. Yeah, I'll just go ask any other people who were there. They'd be like, you'd come home from work and they'd be like, what happened today? Oh my god, you're not gonna believe it. <laughs> Fucking the hand came in and was like, you, uh, you're usurping the throne, and then Littlefinger came up and put a fucking knife to his throat. Wait till you hear what he and said. And him. He said, "I did warn you not to trust him." Can you believe that? Can you believe that? I cannot believe this shit. No! I did warn you not to trust me. You know, he died and was brought back. It was shocking to him. He doesn't understand it. Why am I still here? And he feels unworthy. Yeah, and I think that moment when he charges alone, Battle of the Bastards, sword out, the entire cavalry, Ripley and Prop sword, the cavalry bearing oh, down on him. On the one, on one hand, it's great. incredibly great. On the other hand, you can kind of understand it as, as, as the act of a person who really doesn't understand why they are alive. And maybe it doesn't want to be. I think what is so fascinating about John's nature, and again, the, the way that the, the concentrated binge sort of highlighted this is yeah. that. Is my mother alive? Does she know about me, where I am, where I'm going? Does she care? I think we saw that that was true even before the death of yes. the Earth, really from the beginning. Like, even the choice to leave Winterfell and join the Night's Watch in the first place, you know? Yes, obviously life for him was miserable and he always felt separate from right. part. Captain Mel. <laughs> But, as Jason has pointed out before, you know, he could have gotten a little plot of land, he could have gotten a little castle, he could have built a life. For plenty of people, that would have been enough. But John has always wanted something more, and he's always had a driving force leading him to do something that is simultaneously courageous and it's crazy, detrimental to his own well-being. The core and half-hand plot. Again, this is an exceptional act of valor. John's willingness to take the fate of the world upon his shoulders and to really internalize his vows in a way that few Night's Watch recruits maybe ever had. We are the watches on the wall. 
He also knows, he, uh, he knows unambiguously what he is positioning yeah. himself for, like a near certain death. Allowing the wildlings through the wall. Obviously, that quite, I mean, that's already yeah. led to death, but he knew what the stakes were when he made that decision. And he made it anyway. That's a truly revolutionary act, too. I think that's something that, yeah, you really want it. To understand that world, you have to understand what a crazy thing that is to do. I'm going to let the wildlings in. Really, a timeless thing. If there was one thing the Seven Kingdoms could, could absolutely agree on, is that we fucking hate wildlings. Why, like, kill them all. Tormund is such a good hang. Like, what a mystery. <laughs> By all of Westeros for so long. All the Seven Kingdoms. Oh, Sheena. You didn't fuck a bear, did you? Did he fuck a bear, do you think? I believe it. I buy it. <laughs> I believe anything about Torment. Absolutely anything. I, I believe he tried to fuck a bear, certainly. <laughs> even even going down to treat with Danny on Dragonstone. Something that was like in the context of the history of the Starks, the history of the North is like fucking insane. All your family members that went down there, bad shit happened. Right. And bad numerous shit. people who you trust are reminding you of that fact. Then sail for Dragonstone. Have you forgotten what happened to our grandfather? The Mad King invited him to King's Landing and roasted him alive. I know that. She is here to reclaim the Iron Throne and the Seven Kingdoms. The North is one of those Seven Kingdoms. This isn't an invitation, it's a trap. It could be. Fact, I must agree with Lady Sansa. I remember the Mad King all too well. A Targaryen cannot be trusted, nor can a Lannister. We called your brother king. And then he rode south and lost his kingdom. Rickard burned alive. Ned Stark beheaded. Rob slaughtered at the Red Wedding. Who knows where Arya and Sansa are? Like, just bad stuff happened, and he's gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna go down there again. Why not? And, it's, and you can really, if you view that through the lens of, I shouldn't even be alive anyway. Like, let's, Sansa can handle this. Let, let Sansa handle it. I shouldn't be here. I will go and I will go and try and forge this alliance. And if I die, you know, obviously bad plan. Yeah, leading leading the bad plan. Love Tyrion's bad plan, plan but John's willingness to. I love I love Tyrion. Man, you know Davos is a great smuggler, but smuggling like Tyrion into King's Landing in broad daylight that may be his greatest work ever. Listen, we gotta be. On do you think they'd be looking for him? Or gold clubs? So here's what we're gonna do. What if I'm we're gonna see? take a. Open cove with no cover, Rugged. and I think we should go in the middle of the day when the right. sun is highest and the visibility is clear. Yeah. And then you should just come back down whenever it's a good time for you. Like, let's not check in, no signal. Don't wait to see if the coast is clear. If you see two men in chain mail and helmets, just assume it's fine and come down anyway because they're probably just nibbling on some fermented crap. You binge watch this show and you realize that Littlefinger's accent is fucking wild. <laughs> Accents. Accents. Season one is more of a British, like a British now, now, now. Is that what they're teaching you in Winterfell? No. And then all of a sudden, like, it goes down, the voice goes down in the throat. And the mouth, like, sounds like it's filled with sand. Swallowing too much of his own bullshit. Oh, Peter, Peter, please. And then he's just, be it. and then by season seven, it's fucking insane. Like. Uh, what's what's our? I think my favorite one is probably season seven, the speech to Sansa. Everyone is your friend. Everyone is your enemy. You see threats everywhere. You everywhere you look. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, guy? What happened to you? Our favorite performances. So we say this out of yeah. sincere love and appreciation for the endless gift of that of that accent. One of the other things that stood out to us, though. Are we sure Littlefinger's good? Like, he gets this, he, he's, he's, he's renowned both among other characters on the show and among fans yeah. for being this, this master manipulator and this master puppeteer. He caused, he caused the death of John Aaron. I remember when you told me to put, put the poison in his wine. <laughs> Do and you remember, Peter? Oh. Let her go. She's just like her mother, she'll never love you. I lied for you. I killed for you. Why did you bring her here? Why? I have only loved one woman. <laughs> only one. 
my entire life. <gasps> Your sister. So many, so many of the things that he gets such credit for, these, these epic plans, really a lot of lucky breaks and a lot of like people who were just willing to keep his secret for maybe a little longer than they should have. We already mentioned holding the knife to Ned's throat in the throne room. I mean, that kind of declaration could have ultimately been his undoing, especially right. if his, ultimately his entire strategy boils down to, I'm always on my own side, right. and I'll throw my cloak whenever is necessary. His control of the veil literally boiled down to Sansa not deciding to switch allegiance and rat him out at any point. Also, like, why did he leave the veil? Like, you're good now. You've got a, an intact army. The, not involved in the fight. The memorable shade was, the memorable shade. was elsewhere. Yeah. Oh my god. Why, why leave there? Why not so, stay? This is one of the things that stood out to us and that we were talking about. If Littlefinger were really as good as Littlefinger liked to think, he would have just said, all right, I carved out like yeah, a nice plot here. One of the most powerful people in this realm. Undeniably. He kept upgrading. He had been stuck with just like cursed hair and all. You've got a <laughs> veil. Too greedy. Littlefinger, too greedy to actually warrant the reputation that he has. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm also now on Twitter as well as Instagram. I am on Patreon as well and would love your support. Take care and see you next time. Vozes Vantasamazis. My thoughts of